Welcome back to another episode. It's amazing, when I first started the show, this was one of the very first series that I wanted to talk about, and that is the Wonder Boy series. And it's a very forgotten series, not a lot of people talk about it anymore, and uh, I think it deserves a lot more attention than it's ever gotten. And uh, I'm going to go through the entire series today, and there's a lot of games, there's a lot of name changes in the series. There's actually a lot of confusing spin-offs and other things like that, so I'm going to take care of it all today. Here we go. Wow, it's so amazing to see this many games in the Wonder Boys series. It's really interesting for anybody who knows the original Wonder Boys that it started off as a, an action platformer and then it became an action RPG later on and it completely changed and went with a whole new naming scheme. Let's start with the very first game in the series, Wonder Boy. So this game was originally created by a company called Escape and Sega. So Escape later became known as Weststone. Now this game was actually an arcade title. It's basically an action platformer, like many others of the time. You're trying to rescue your girlfriend Tanya, and along the way, you're collecting fruits, riding on skateboards, and throwing hatchets at enemies. The graphics are really good. The music is really kind of upbeat and happy. Hudson brought a version out to the NES, but they called it Adventure Island. And the reason why is because Sega actually owned the name Wonder Boy. Now, what's unusual about this is that Hudson actually created a whole bunch of different sequels to Adventure Island that have nothing to do with Wonder Boy, but it actually keeps some of the basic mechanics of the original game. Now, the next game in the series is Wonder Boy in Monsterland. I gotta say, this is one of my favorites in the series. I love this game. I used to play it at my friend's place all the time back in the day, because I, I only had the NES, so I was always very jealous that he had Wonder Boy in Monsterland. And the roots of this game are actually that it was released as an arcade game in Japan and later on the Sega Master System. This is actually an interesting game in the series because this is actually where it became an action RPG side view style of game. Our main character this time has a sword, armor, and shield. Basically a medieval world. You go through the levels collecting money and killing enemies and upgrading weapons at shops throughout the game. And what's really great, there's a lot of really great secrets throughout this game. I love it. Hudson brought out a port of it as well to the PC Engine. And again, they changed the main character, called it Bikuruman, and based it on an, a really popular, actually, anime in Japan at the time. Now, it is one of my favorites in the series, but I gotta say, it's very, very difficult. You can just die like that in the game. And also, to make matters a little bit harder, there's a time limit on every level. So, you have the hourglass going down, as soon as it goes down a little bit, you'll actually lose life, and uh, you can be dead sometimes before you're at the end of the level. So, that can be a little frustrating, but overall, I love Wonder Boy and Monster Land. Now we move on to Wonder Boy 3 in Monster Lair. Now this game changes once again, it's actually an arcade game. It's an arcade shooter of all things. And uh, you can play co-op with a friend, and you're going side view through levels, fighting boss characters, and there's a lot of levels in this game. Graphics are really good, music is really nice as well. Not very difficult, very repetitive some of the levels, but a, a very good game. Now the TurboGrafx CD actually got a version of the game, an arcade perfect version of the game, and it was simply titled Monster Lair. There was also a Mega Drive version for Japan and for Europe. The next game in the series ditches the shooter elements, brings back the RPG elements, and is simply known as Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap. So this game actually picks up right where Wonder Boy and Monster Land left off. You're actually going through the underground maze trying to get to the final boss. You finally get to the boss and after you defeat him, he actually changes you into a dragon. So the rest of the game is you trying to remove the curse and get back to your human form, also known as your human form. Now here's the real strength of the game, in that it's a lot like Metroid, as you get turned into different monsters throughout the game. 
All these monsters actually have different abilities. Some of them actually let you open up brand new areas. An example of this would be like if you use Mouse Man, he can actually walk up walls. He's actually small, so he can actually get into different areas than you could while you're in your dragon form. So that's really cool. It had a port to the Turbo Graphics, simply known as Dragon's Curse. This is where it gets confusing, as it also had a port to the PC Engine called Adventure Island. Now, this has actually nothing to do with Hudson's Adventure Island series. I know, this stuff gets very confusing. There also was a Sega Master System port to the Game Gear. And the game was simply called Monster World 2 Dragon's Trap. I gotta say, Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap is right up there as one of my favorite Sega Master System games. It's right there with Fantasy Star, with Miracle Warriors, Govelius. Dragon's Curse is also a very, very good port to the Turbo Graphics. I highly recommend both these games. They're a lot of fun. If you like Metroid, you're gonna love these games. Next up on the Genesis is Wonder Boy in Monster World, also known as Wonder Boy 5 Monster World 3 in Japan. No joke with the title, that's the actual name of that. Wonder Boy Monster World is a lot like Wonder Boy Monsterland. It's actually a spiritual successor. The gameplay is a lot the same, because you're collecting money, you're upgrading equipment, and another interesting aspect is that some of the levels are actually the same as the Wonder Boy Monsterland. They're just upgraded a little bit, a little bit more enhanced graphics. It's funny, I actually turned on the game earlier in the week to revisit it, because uh, I finished it back in the day, and uh, I remember the game being really easy when I was younger. I, I remember finishing it in three days. I picked it up in Reno with my parents. Playing it earlier in the week, I couldn't believe how hard it was. It's a little slow. It's, it's, it's a little hard, but one thing that's kind of good is that you actually get items, you actually get some boots that actually speed you up later on in the game. So it's not so slow, but it's a lot harder than I remember. That's the one funny thing about that game. And it happens again. Hudson brings a port of this game to the TurboGrafx CD, changes the title to Dynastic Hero, and changes the main character. And they also change the music. The last game in the series is Monster World 4. And I gotta say, I really love this game, and I've always been upset that it never got released here. The very first time I ever saw this was in a, a game fan magazine, and I was, I remember looking at it going, oh my god, I can't wait till this comes over here, and it never got released. It was just one of those crazy things. I, I was always really sad about it, so I definitely had to import it back in the day. This time you control Arsha, and you guide her through many levels that still have the RPG elements of the earlier games. What makes this game so fun is your new companion, called Papalog. This familiar is very helpful. It actually helps you solve puzzles and helps you get to new areas. The graphics and sound in this game are top notch. If I actually had to say something, I would actually say out of all the Wonder Boy games, this one is one of my favorites. It's actually, I would actually say it's the perfection of the entire series uh, when we get to this game. I think they did every single thing right. For anybody who's interested, there actually is a really wonderful translated ROM out there if you want to try the game. And I'd actually say that because it doesn't exist, you can't actually buy it over here. For any hardcore collectors out there that actually want to own all the games in one complete collection, there's this. The Monster World Complete Collection. This is actually volume 29 of the Sega Ages series. If you're looking to complete your Wonder Boy collection, definitely grab this. The reason why I had to do this episode is because this just feels like an old forgotten gem of a series and nobody ever talks about this anymore. Everybody seemed to have forgotten about it over the years and it's a really, really great series. I really hope that Sega revisits this series, has a look at this great franchise that they created and uh, does some ports, maybe bring something out to the Nintendo 3DS. It's a pipe dream, I can always dream about it, I can always wish for it, um, but I think Sega's actually forgotten about this game sadly, but I have not. And I really wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's a fantastic series, it's one of my favorite series, it's up there with my favorite series of all time, and that is the Wonder Boy series. And I was really happy to show you guys it. So, anyways guys, till next time.